hey guys, have you ever been in this position? You've been at home recording, writing a really killer song, and you just can't wait to put that low end on your track. But guess what? You don't have one of these. I got you covered. All right, but for real guys, have you ever been in this position where you're at home, you're working on the track, you're laying down some really killer ideas, you're writing a really badass song, and you just can't wait to put that to the track, but guess what? You don't have a bass, or you left your bass at your buddy's house, or your bass player took his bass randomly for the weekend. You have to live with a track that has no low end, or have to figure out some really weird way how to turn your guitar into a bass guitar. Well, I got you covered. See, about two weeks ago, I was developing content for some of my upcoming videos, specifically the Jeff Loomis Tone Forge plugin uh, revisiting video that I recently put out, and I was laying down the track, and oh, dude, I don't have a bass with me. I have to wait till the weekend comes around where I can get to the studio and lay down my track because our studio is about an hour away from where I live and I was like I don't know if I want to wait that long and then I have to remember the riffs and I'll do oh it was a headache and then I remembered hey for my birthday a little bit after Christmas I went ahead and I bought myself the gin bass plugin from submission audio and I wanted to do that as a way to uh, use the plugin with MIDI for certain tracks and I said you know what? I got it I might as well learn how to use this thing so I went ahead and I learned how to use it and I used Use it as the main bass track for the demonstration. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring back that Tone Forge Jeff Loomis demonstration that I did, and I turned the bass uh, EQs up just a little bit so you guys can hear it, and just to show you guys what it sounds like within a mix. Afterwards, I'm gonna show you guys the easy as hell UI interface that you can use, and uh, how easy it is to learn how to use this thing and how awesome it sounds. But before we look at it, let me go ahead and let me demonstrate how this thing sounds within a mix. Let's go. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the demonstration. Right now on Reaper, I have the UI opened up. So this is what it looks like once you open it up in your DAW. This thing looks badass. I love the Genie, by the way. The Genie looks evil as hell. It looks cool, cool. Uh, but this is basically a uh, an amp. This is an amplifier. Um, and for those of you guys at home that are wondering, what am I using as the uh, impulse response or what am I using as a cab? I actually went ahead and I attached my neural DSP parallax to this thing. Um, you can do the same thing with your whatever bass plugin you're using. Just turn off the amplifier and use this as your main amplifier. Um, but just looking at the UI real quick, you got the amplifier power. For this video, I specifically had the power off just because I like the way it sounded with the parallax, but you can turn it on. Look at that, he's smiling, how cute, he's smiling. And you can switch the channel out, and I think this is like the insane channel. This thing is just crazy. <laughs> Obviously, he looks lit as fuck. Colors change as well, his glasses are falling off, but you guys aren't here for the cosmetics of this. You guys are here for the sound and everything. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna look at this. You get your volume settings, you get your width settings, which just makes the bass sound wider for some of you people who don't know what that means. Uh, you get string noise, which is really cool. So when the bass stops, you get some excess string noise or while it's playing, you get some string noise. Uh, some muting noise as well. I have the muting noise cranked all the way up. So when you do those staccato riffs, you can hear the like the, the string stop. So it's not so digital, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better word. Uh, you also have your alternative picking setting. Um, I have mine all the way uh, over here. What the hell is that? I don't know that I'm stupid. 1 16th is a 1 16th note. Um, my project is in 200 BPM 
and uh yeah you can basically just pick how the alternate picking sounds um i believe off is just complete down picking i could be wrong but i have it set to the 1 16th notes uh, my tone is at midnight i messed around this a little bit but i really found that it sounded best at midnight um you also get your key switch info as well this basically tells you um the notes and the articulation so you could have harmonic notes harmonic mutes dead mutes slide ups slide ups slide downs slide downs uh, fast slow pull offs hammer ons uh pick obviously that's what uh, what i use so here's the track i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna play the bass soloed just so you guys can hear it What did you guys think? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope maybe kind of give you guys a little bit of a tip when it comes to demo work at home. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. Does this thing sound too fake? Uh, I believe if you mess with the velocity a little bit more, you could definitely make it sound a lot more human. Of course, I'm playing metal, so everything's like, you know, and um, actually it cuts to the mix very, very well. You know, I think that's uh, hard, something difficult for me when it comes to uh, mixing bass is getting the, the bass highs to come out strong but still have that strong low end as well um and with this preset pack it's basically mix ready i just messed around with a couple little things here and there and bam there's my uh basically my basically my dream bass tone anyways let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments below and i'll catch you guys on the next video please be safe wash your ass wash your hands and like always keep it heavy